Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and um, my co-host, Danell, is will be here. He's like on the road, so like when he gets here, he's going to join us. But we're going to start out like this is episode number 97, Cause and Effect Makes Free Will Impossible. Okay, and like, you know, I think I, I covered this extensively on episode number 91, which was an off-the-cuff off the cuff number seven, but I want to stay with this because like this is the answer. This is why free will is absolutely, completely, you know, unequivocally impossible. And like when, when, when the world gets this, we're going to like transform the world. We're going to make a brand new world. So here's the thing. All right, before we get into this, as we always do, I want to explain what people mean when they say they have a free will and then why the show is so important, why this issue is so important. Okay, when, when people say they have a free will, essentially it means like we're not puppets, we're not robots, because like that's the reality. The reality is like we're just going along for the ride. We're just like nothing is up to us, which is amazing. It's like it makes the, the entire world a movie, and we're just like actors. We don't get to interpret our roles, all right? So it, that sometimes it's, it's like it's easier to understand what free will is in terms of like what it's not. In other words, like if we're robots, if we're puppets, if, if nothing at all is up to us, if we had a free will, then stuff would be up to us, okay? Like there are other definitions. Like for example, some people say they're like, well, to have free will, we would be fundamentally morally responsible for what we do. You know, we would take credit fundamentally for what we do well, good and all, and be blameworthy for what we do wrong and bad and stuff. Now, obviously, if, if, if we're just puppets, robots, if like if we're, we're just manifesting, and you know, here's the thing, a lot of people don't like the idea that we're puppets or robots or automatons, and that's understandable because we, we're like human beings. We like to like feel that we're people, persons. So, if that doesn't like sound so good to us, like think of it as like if you're religious, you know, if nothing's up to us, then obviously everything's up to God. You know, so like, it's like God. You remember when you were a kid, when you were a little kid, and you were playing with like soldiers or with girls, like with dolls and stuff, and like you were like, you know, you, you were like God in that situation, you know? You just like told them what to do, what to say and all. That's how our reality is. It's God's show. He's running the entire thing. And I guess, I don't know, he does it for his amusement. Sometimes it's at our expense. <laughs> he makes us like at each other and stuff, which is like why this free will thing should be overcome because the extent we overcome it, the, the more civilized we can be as a world. But that's, that's a good way to, to understand it. So like, you know, if, if, if being a robot or a puppet or an automaton doesn't sound good to you, think of it that we're manifesting God's will. God's running the show it's like we're just like the physical manifest manifestations of what he wants us to do and not to do and all that. Okay, or if you're a scientist, if you're more scientific, you know, I, I tend to be more of a scientist even though I believe in God, I, I, I equate God with the universe, then um, we're manifesting the universal will. In other words, everything is cause and effect as we're going to explain in this show. So like the Big Bang and maybe whatever was before that, actually is what is determining what's making everything that happens happen today and whenever. All right, so that's, um, that is like what we mean when we say we have a free will. And I'll get into why we, that's impossible, you know, during the show. But the reason this is so important is, I mean, we've got... <laughs> We, who we are as human beings, we've got it completely wrong because like the first fundamental fact of our reality of human beings is we exist. Okay, that's, that's undeniable, irrefutable, incontrovertible. Hold on, I got to take a drink. But all right, the second fundamental fact, the important fact is we do stuff. We do stuff. We don't, you know, like if we didn't do stuff, everything would be static, motionless, nothing would happen. You know, no, it wouldn't be like our reality, but we do stuff. So, like, to get this second fundamental fact of who we are completely wrong, entirely wrong, we couldn't get it more wrong. You know, that's major. Our entire world is completely insane, <laughs> you know? And, like, it leads to problems. It does. Like, if we got this right, we really would create a more compassionate, understanding, intelligent, sane world. Okay, so, and, and this is important. 
You know, it's important, you know, you figure, and the other thing, like, you know, my co-host likes to say this a lot, it, it, it's true, you know, it's about the truth, you know, do you, want, do you want our civilization to be based on a lie, based on a, a, a huge mistake about who we are as people, or do you want to base our life on how it is actually, who we are, how we are? All right, so that's why it's important. Okay, now, so cause and effect makes free will impossible, that's the show. And I'm going to like continue with this like on and on and on because once you get this, you get everything. And personally, I, 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 it's hard for me to understand how, how people don't get this because like, you know, I've spoken to like intelligent people, college graduates, master's degree people, PhDs actually. And, you know, in a sense they get causality, but they don't really get it so fully because if they really got it so fully they would understand how it makes free will completely impossible and that's how that's how persistent this illusion of free will is it's like you know it defies reason you know <laughs> you, you, and, and again and that's why we're going to go over and over this causality until i we can explain it clear enough and you can get it all right so here's here's the thing everything happens for a reason, for a cause. Now, what is a cause? A cause is like, it could be like an event, a series of events. It depends, depends on how you want to look at it. But basically, a cause is like that if something didn't happen, the effect wouldn't happen. Okay, so like, let's, let's translate that to our human decisions. We make a, we do anything. We move a hand. We say something. We feel something. We we do something, okay? We decide something. That is an effect. That's what we're doing, right? It has to have a cause, okay? It has to have a cause. That's the thing. We don't just do things for no reason. That's impossible. It's conceptually impossible. There's absolutely no... I mean, think about it. How could it be that something happens without a reason for it happening? Okay, now, if you want to go back to the only way that this can kind of make sense, but it doesn't really even actually, is if you start, if you consider like the very beginning of everything, okay? Because, I mean, like, and that transcends our logic. You know, we think like, well, God, let's say God, um, we figure that God had to exist eternally or the universe had to exist eternally because we ask ourselves, well, you know, like, if it didn't exist eternally, it must have had a beginning. But then we ask ourselves, well, there, there must have been a cause for that beginning. How could things just begin? How did it come, spring out of nowhere? And again, that trans our, transcends our logic. We can't understand how something can always be here because, you know, it, it should have had a beginning. But then we also understand that if it had a beginning, like, how could it just begin? So, again, at, at the fundamental level, you know, in terms of, like, the beginning, the very, very, very beginning of everything, we can't understand that. But after that, okay, this is the point. After that very, very beginning or that endless, you know, eternity into the past, everything has to have a cause. And the easiest way to understand this, the most general, the most comprehensive, is to consider, let's say, start at the Big Bang, okay? You start at the Big Bang, and then, like, what happens? The first moment of the Big Bang is what leads to this next moment. Because think of it as like, think of it as like, um, the universe is really like matter moving through space and time. So like, you know, at the very first moment of the Big Bang, whatever was there, you know, gases, flu uh, you know, particles, whatever was there was at a certain state. You know, the, the, posi the particles were at certain positions, okay? Then through the forces of nature, like, gravity, which I don't know if it existed back then, but like through various forces, the second moment, oh dude, he's here. All right, our co-host Anel is here. And like, Anel, this is like episode number 97. We're explaining why cause and effect made free will impossible. And right now I'm explaining to the audience, you know, how to see this in terms of like the universe. The universe, um, okay, so like again, we're at the Big Bang. We're at the Big Bang and so like, Think about it. The second moment of existence, like starting with the Big Bang, had to be the cause or had to be the effect of the first moment. Okay, the first moment of the universe caused the second moment. Again, so my mic come up 
Absolutely. And so like that's the, you know, when you use the universe, the good thing about using the universe, it's like there's not, the universe means everything. So in other words, like when we say the, un the, the first moment of the universe is the complete cause of the second moment, that's completely correct. You know, because like when I, I mean, this is important, is if I would say like what is the cause of my saying what I'm saying right now, well, it's hard to say, you know, because it's coming from my unconscious. I mean, there's more than one cause, technically. But if you want to be most, most precise, more, most technical, you could simply say that the cause of my saying what I just said before is the state of the universe before in this causal process. Okay. All right. So, um, so the idea that uh, you got it. Okay, it's there. Um, nice table. Where are we? Yeah, okay. I'm not sure. I think you're on. I think your camera's on you. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure where the camera is. But anyways, all right. So you got causality. And um, okay. Okay. Um, so I, I think I'm on three now. All right. So <laughs> you got, all right. So that, that's causality that nothing can happen without a cause. That's the thing. Nothing. You know, everything has to have a cause. So think about it. Think about it in terms of anything we do. What I'm saying right now has a cause, right? Okay. And so there's a cause to that cause. Because again, everything has to have a cause. So what I'm saying has a cause. There's a cause to the cause to what I'm saying. And then there's a cause to that cause. And then there's a cause to that cause. And these causes are always going back moment by moment. You know, so you got, you know, and it's cause and effect. So like, you know, what I'm saying is the effect of the cause. And that cause becomes the effect of the cause before that. And all right, so we're going back moment by moment. That is what makes free will impossible because if you follow that chain of cause and effect, it goes back to before we were born, back to before the planet was created, back to, you know, to the Big Bang. So um, let's see. Are we, um, that's the thing. That's the thing. So like, are we ready with our co-host yet? Okay, Can you on. hear me? Because I don't know if I put this on right. I don't know. Does it look right? Uh, looks, yeah, it looks great. Absolutely. All right. Cool. So I saw this page. This is what you sent me, right? That's what I said. What are you yeah. talking about now? Right now, okay, it's going to be cause and effect makes free will impossible. I just want to make sure that everybody understands okay. causality. Yeah, right. Explain, like, here's the thing. Why I, I was late? No, no, no. Or... Forget it. Explain <laughs> to the audience why, because some people say, no, not everything has a cause, you know? But, like, explain why that would make free will impossible. So, so we're on number 89 real quick? Um, 97. <laughs> Oh, okay. Explain 97. what? Explain, like, for people, like, I'm trying to explain to the audience that everything has a cause, that nothing can happen without it having been caused. That's logical, that's scientific, it couldn't be any other way. Well, but, things are either causal or random. Right, well, that's to say, some people, I mean, you, I mean, you got to explain why, what randomness is, explain the whole thing about randomness relates to free will. Okay, well... If something doesn't have a cause, then it would be random, right? The yeah, but I mean, there is no such... I mean, explain random. What does random I, mean? I can't explain it because I don't think it's possible. Exactly. Explain well, why try. it's not possible. Uh, <laughs> outcomes are not dependent on anything that preceded it, that came yeah. before it. Yeah, like something just happened. Something just came out of it. someone says something happened randomly, they usually mean it was unpredictable, but that's because they don't know all the variables that were secretly at play. Right, which right. Which I've been saying for a year now. And then the Higgs boson thing came out. So, you know, there are variables that we haven't discovered yet. Right. And again, like when people use the word random, sometimes indeterminism, they're trying to say that so some stuff in the universe happens that's not caused. So, like, if something happens... Yeah, it's but not that, that could be true, but that's not the point. Of, that wouldn't prove free will. That's, that's, that's what, what I want to explain. To, yeah, exactly. I mean, if it didn't have a cause, it would be random, and nothing would have any causality, and nothing would make any sense. There wouldn't be a causal chain. So... You would be a first causer, and all your preferences would be erased, and you would have everything would look like 50 50. You wouldn't know what to do next. Right. You wouldn't have any built up condition preferences or genetics. Exactly. So. Another way of saying it is like if what we're saying, doing, feeling, thinking, and all doesn't have a cause, it can't be caused by our will. You know, because it's not caused. Well, it could be, but then you'd be a first cause. You wouldn't know what to do next. You'd be a little god. So, in theory, it could be, but nobody would know. Like I always say, I would wake up tomorrow and become a Filipino, what do I say, Filipino fisherman? Or right, 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 nuclear. right. I mean, nothing would have any causality, so the whole world would be in total chaos if there was no cause. Right, but even, I mean, like, think about so it. I don't know. Like, when you say, explain what randomness means, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't. It's impossible. 
It's impossible because like nothing can have. But even has if to have it were possible, the point of the it wouldn't prove free will. Absolutely, that's so. The, even if you guys out there think that there's randomness, terrific. We're here to not prove to say the free will. We're refuting free will. So even if somebody, some mathematical genius, came here and proved to me things are random, that, that's not the point. So okay, you win, but that doesn't prove free will. We're here to say that free will doesn't exist. Exactly. So, so that's the thing. This I whole, like to stick with the topic. Right. This whole quantum <laughs> mechanics cares? thing, yeah, quantum mechanics, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, indeterminacy, like that would not. As a matter of fact, it'd make free will more impossible because if things weren't caused, yeah, right. That's what I'm trying to say. They couldn't be right. caused by us. Yeah, very All right. good. Now, I've just, I've just explained to the audience... Now, is there a third alternative? When I say everything is either causal or random, the third one would be I'm a first causer. I make the cause. Well, that's, yeah. But that still would not... I mean, you, every, every choice would be look exactly equal. There wouldn't be any condition preferences. You wouldn't know what to do next. Oh, here's the so thing. So even if that were true... The, that would prove total chaos. I don't know how you would even exist that way. Right, but again, like as I explained, as I explained before you got here, you okay. know, yeah, being, what did you, what happened before I got here? I was Catch explaining. I was explaining why causality makes free will impossible. I went into the universe, and like, like this first cause thing doesn't make sense because I was explaining in terms of like the first moment of the universe or God or whatever. You know, it's like if you say that that there was like a beginning to everything then that transcends reason because then you ask well, what came before that and if you say that it was returnal then you say well it must have had a beginning so in terms of like our um you know our being first causers like you know as a possibility it's completely impossible because after the big bang everything must have a cause i, I agree the beginning of the universe and god it doesn't the beginning doesn't make any sense but we're just here to refute free will that makes perfect sense why there's no free so i don't know how the universe started nor do i really care at this stage we're just here teaching people they don't have a free will I hear what you. makes even less sense is how anybody could actually believe in free will that's even more mysterious than how the universe i mean it's equally mysterious i don't really think or believe that anyone really i know i always say this but do people really actually believe that they that they have free will. I mean, I, I know they do, but it's like a joke, right? I, I mean, think, yeah, I think they're pulling our leg. I think they really believe it. <laughs> well, anybody with so, any intelligence certainly couldn't believe in it. I'm not, no offense, but I had no choice to No, speak. I know. And it's not yeah. like you can't blame people for not getting it. Cause well, like, I pragmatically you, like to assess them. And No, but what I'm saying is like, it's yeah. not up to them. They have free will. So if they don't get it, it's like, yeah, but the it's not up to me. I, I, I can't help but be perplexed by the whole thing of how it's so I obvious. Know, I know. All right. So, like, Explain to them, like, again, I just explained why causality, cause and effect makes free will impossible. You try to explain it to them, and we'll try to, because, like, basically people aren't... Well, let's talk about your life. I don't care, like, I know you're getting into the history of the universe, but you're born, okay, you're conceived. You didn't self-create yourself. You, you didn't, you know, people say they chose their parents from outer space or whatever when, before they were spirit. But there would be a cause to that. So when you came to Earth, you were born by these parents, and they started conditioning you for at least... 10 to 12, 14 years, you have your genetics, you have your knee-jerk reactions, reflexes, and conditioning, so you didn't self-cause yourself. Exactly. So you were born by parents, and then they had parents, and everything is conditioning on the culture, the language, you know, what happened before that. Even things before we were born do affect us. Like, like I've said before, if certain things had happened, we'd be speaking Dutch in uh, New York instead of English, and maybe American Indian language if they didn't sell it to whoever, you know, so, but that, you know, that, 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 that shows that but things that happen before born do affect us. But I'm not really concerned about what happened before, as you seem more concerned. Right. I'm just worried about my human life. People don't have a free will as they were conceived. So that means nine months before you were born to the day you die, you don't have free will. How the universe started, Marco Polo and Alexander the Great's an Ottoman Empire effect on our lives, it does, that is true, but I don't really, no offense, I don't really care. I hear you. All right. I'm just saying there's no free will. So, like, it? here's the thing. Like, you started, any for anyone, like, started 10 years old. Anyone's 10 years old, okay? Well, they, I started conception. No, no, but I... Because you're being conditioned by the nutrients. Your mother, right. mother might smoke, she might take, that effect, that does... All right, let's start you. a conception. Yeah, okay. The, the, you're, you're conceived, that happens at a moment in time. Okay, now... Who you are at the next moment in time is completely dependent on who now you are. Now you're talking. At the now first you're moment. refuting free will very well, right? All right. So that you've got like so who you are at the second so moment. So your parents. This is a G-rated show, but they had sex and you were conceived. Right. Right. The next moment, your mother may have taken a drag from a cigarette in the hospital. Who knows? That does. That will start conditioning your lungs or whatever she's eating that moment in the hospital. 
you know, maybe it's delicious to the one second old baby and you start liking chocolate more. I don't know, but at the first second of conception is where the conditioning starts. All right. And your genetics are explain, right. That's explain brilliant. Explain to yeah. the audience cause and effects. I have a feeling they don't get this because I, I don't, I don't, you know, sometimes it, it's got to be that they don't appreciate yeah. the, the, the implications. Well, there's a of cause at your conception and an effect. So whatever your mother does for those nine months, to, you know, is effect, cause and effect. And then you get born and you start breathing and then you get conditioned by... Uh, Operant classical conditioning and positive and negative so it was sticks and carrots. Explain, explain the process of cause. Don't, don't even like go right. to the human beings. Explain the process of cause and effect. They got to get this. So I walk down the street on the right side and I don't see a hole. So I, f I don't see it, so I walk on the right side. The next day I fall in the hole and I hurt my leg. So I'm not going to probably walk that way the next day. I didn't like it. I felt pain. So... And that might be a bad example, but I'm saying I, go, I went a certain way, I just, I had something negative happened, so the next day I'm going to walk on the other side of the street. I, conceptually. Well, that's conditioning. No, no, conceptually. I want you to explain oh, conceptually was... cause and effect. Just like that, like everything has to have a cause. Because, like I've said, you know, I said it before you got here. You know, explain it to them in, in your words why everything has to have a cause. You know, explain the well, process. Well, it doesn't causality. absolutely have to have a cause, but if it doesn't have a cause, that's randomness, and that doesn't prove free will either. So everything does have to have a cause, because how else could it come into I mean, it has an effect, so every effect had to have a cause before it. How can you have an effect without a cause? That's what I'm saying. That's, so that's the thing. By the way, I'm just hearing this for the first time. He only gave me the notes for the another episode, so I don't know. <laughs> no, it's true. You didn't no, it's true. I, 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 I downloaded the other one, but that's not what we're talking about. I hear you. It's episode three. <laughs> All right, so everything has to have a cause. Well, to refute free will, it doesn't, because if it doesn't have a cause, which I don't believe, you know, I, wait, I have a conditioned response to why I don't believe every, every, things can be random, because I always believe there's hidden, hidden variables at play. Right. But even if it doesn't have a cause, it does. the point of the show is no free will, right? So, right, that's okay. I know, I know, all but right. all right. Okay, we how can... could something not have a cause? I don't know. And now, I, I, I understand, all right, they understand that, like, if things don't have causes, that doesn't help free will either. But we let's let's stick. By with the way, the truth. I have a cause for not knowing. I haven't really thought. I mean, I just I just can't. The way I was you raised and my genetics did not give me a re an answer for that. I have no idea how something could come without a cause. Maybe some other guy did, but he studied it, whatever. That's I mean, the thing. You I know, don't like, have the causality to answer that because it's so incomprehensible. It's as incomprehensible to me as how the universe started. All right. Again, like when you you know when you think of the universe being everything, the universe is like everything. Whether we see it or not, whether we perceive it or not, whether we understand it or not, the universe is everything, right? Correct. We're in the universe. Definitely. Everything is in the universe. Nothing is outside of the universe. So if something in the universe happens, it obviously has a cause related to the universe. Okay, so again, the, the, the easiest way to understand this is like anything that happens. A tree... Well, you know, I, I just want to go on a tangent for a second. When the universe, ex you're, if you believe in the Big Bang theory, what, what did the Big Bang explode into? That would be outside the universe. I don't know what, even know what that is. Oh, that's But, we, but that doesn't matter because human beings are in the universe. Right, right, right. So nobody could ever go to a beach on a starry night and look up and say, I'm outside the universe. So this, the number one assumption for why free will doesn't exist actually is that we are inside the universe. Exactly. Because if we get some crazy, smart, you know, gibberish, incomprehensible ar uh, argument from one of these philosophers and, you know, intellectuals and neuro and they say we're outside the universe then aren't my law of causality i don't know if it works it's not because so if people can, can folks if you can no, agree no, no, that we're no, in no. the universe It'll, you want to know something because like you're saying like all right what did the now big i'm sounding like no, one of listen, these other guys listen. are incomprehensible what did the big bang explode into you're saying right because there was wasn't nothing there. there no no what i'm saying is like it doesn't matter what it exploded into. If it existed, it was part of the universe, even if it didn't exist. Okay, universe, but my point is... Universe, okay. by definition, means everything. True, but I want people to understand that humans are in the universe. They're yes. not, they weren't out... Uh, if the Big Bang exploded and you had a camera watching it, in theory, maybe that person would be outside the universe, but that can't happen because we're inside the universe. Exactly. So once we're inside the universe, all moments of the universe are dependent on the moment before, so humans are part of the universe. So like you said, every moment's dependent okay, on the moment we before. Okay, we got three and a half minutes. Again. So you got that. Again, I got that. I got this. What if this. someone says to you, I'm a, I was born outside the universe? You everything put them in a psych ward. has a cause. Everything must have a cause. How can people think that things happen without a cause? That, I mean, yeah. like, this is like basic science. So even if you were outside it's, the universe, it would be a cause 
universe for that. Explain just... this. Forget the universe for now. <laughs> Explain this in terms of science. When you, you know, scientific method. What scientific method? The way we arrive at scientific truth is like we do an experiment. I don't know which camera it's on. We do an experiment, but like, so what happens is, um, basically the experiment is like you do something and it has a certain effect. Okay, so like the experiment is like, something happens because of something you do and how do you find out if it's true or not you do it again you replicate it okay this is scientific and you isolate method. variables right. usually so to see what, what the I'm saying is like this is basic science this is basic logic everything has to have a cause so again i don't understand how people don't get well, this well according to quantum theory quantum mechanics and all that stuff that there could be there's a cause, but the outcome is unknown. They can't trace the cause to the effect. Right, but that's because of in information. And also, they don't know all the variables. Exactly. But again, I mean, even you, like the last quark was just discovered like 18 years ago. The Higgs boson was discovered like six months ago. So we can't be that arrogant to think we've discovered every subatomic particle that's ever existed. We're just discovering them like last right. month. In, so. in quantum mechanics, Copenhagen interpretation, all that, basically what they're saying is like, well, we can't see what's causing this phenomenon. Right. And like because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, we can't in principle predict it, so it must be uncaused. No, just because we can't in principle predict it, because we can't simultaneously measure the mm -hmm. position and momentum of a particle, does not mean that that particle behavior is uncaused. That's the thing. And even if it did, were uncaused, it still wouldn't prove free will. All right. Okay, we got a minute. <laughs> even though now. I agree with you. It's definitely cause, even if I granted whoever our, our opponent, whoever came here from a MIT physicist lab and said he studied the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and I said, he said it was uncaused, I would say fine, but it doesn't prove you have free will. Well, right. If I do random acts, how do I take responsibility Again, for that? Again, it's a chain of cause and effect. You do something that has a cause. The cause to that comes, let's say, a moment before that. And let's say it's your brain state. Your brain state before you do something causes you to do it. Then your brain state before that cause caused that cause. The brain state before the cause of that cause caused that cause. And the brain state before that cause caused that cause. The brain so, so you're going back moment by moment, brain state by brain state. This is so clear. This is so obvious. So take that backwards regression to the future. Well, going forward. Right. What we're doing right now, you know, like what I'm saying, what you're saying, it's going to be the cause of the next moment. And that's, going to, that's the effect. So the effect of whatever we're saying becomes the cause of the next effect and the cause of the next effect. So it goes on into the future. We got like 20 seconds. All right, so if it goes on to the future, then life is an already made movie, but we don't know how it's going to end. Obviously, it's unpredictable, and it's fa just as fascinating and wonderful. Without, it's better without free will. You don't it's, up, get upset with yourself for the mistakes you made because you did the best you could at the time, and you couldn't have done otherwise. you got to end the show. Go ahead. Like. All right, uh, no free will in Westchester and Manhattan.